Welcome back to the series, everyone. Uh, in this episode, we are going to tackle the two DRAM expansion cards. And we already start with a problem, you see. That heatsink is not properly screwed to one of the regulators, so it will not really dissipate the, the heat from those regulators. There is a screw missing over there. I'll have to replace that screw um, because this is a risk we cannot run, have a linear regulator not properly connected to its heatsink. Uh, it can lead to overheating and damage. So there comes uh, uh, the, the heatsink. The two regulators are now exposed. There is some old thermal paste uh, on them. I need to test them off circuit uh, to make sure that they are working okay. I will not be drawing a lot of current from them, so it's iffy uh, whether this test... This test will not be completely safe, but at least it will give us an idea. So I take out um, the, the two linear regulators. One is for 5 volts, the other one is for 12 volts. Off they come. I will connect them to my bench power supply and measure what output voltage they provide. The input voltage has to be higher uh, than the output voltage. For the 5 volt regulator, I think I'm using 8 volts and we get 4.9 something at, at the other end. Not drawing sufficient current, but at least it's regulating at the right voltage. So now it's the 12 volt one. I think I'm putting in 18 volt and I get 12.25 at the output, 12.16. That's good enough. Um, it's not a, a thorough test because I'm not drawing current from them. Uh, they can fail when you draw current from them. But I'll take the risk and I will reinstall the original regulators. Again, because this is a minimal intervention uh, restoration, I want to keep as many of the original parts as possible. Now, reinstalling them uh, uh, is a little bit uh, tricky. Um, you cannot put them flush against the PCB, otherwise they will not connect correctly to the, to the heatsink, which has some, some spacers, uh, some standoffs. Uh, so you need to cover that distance. So I'm using BlueTac to make sure that the distance is the correct one. I keep checking and rechecking um, just to make sure. Once I'm satisfied, that uh, they are the correct distance from the board. I just resolder them with a good uh, flux paste and good uh, solder, 6040. Uh, then just cleaning uh, the, the, the flux left behind. Uh, I will be adding some new fresh thermal paste. Uh, these are the standoffs that I'm putting back in the screws. You see all the three standoffs in there and then there comes the new thermal paste and uh, I screw uh, the heatsink uh, back in. I do this for both boards and then I move on to testing each individual 1-bit uh, DRAM chip. This is a 20 on 2104, so it has 4096 bits. Uh, it's only 1 bit per chip. And I test them individually on my little DRAM, uh, single bit DRAM tester. You have some LEDs there that tell you the result. Let me show it uh, closer. Uh, you just put uh, the chip on that little socket, you press a button, and the, the LEDs flicker as, it, as it's performing the tests. And if you get uh, blue at the end, in this case it's only one blue square, because instead of 16K I only have 4K bits. Uh, but if we get blue, it's working. When it's not working, when you press the button, you get red. Um, and a bunch of chips uh, actually were not working. Uh, but I tested them all. Uh, taking them one at a time, testing them and dividing them into chips that work and chips that don't work. And at the end, uh, about only about one third of the chips uh, passed. These early DRAM chips were, were a disaster. Three were marginal, not retaining their results long enough. And 40 chips were completely busted. Early DRAM from the mid 70s were catastrophe, but I have replacements. I will be replacing them with uh, 4116s, which have 16K instead of 4K, but it's also single bit DRAM. So they will fit uh, in, in the sockets. Uh, the, the pinout is the same, no problem. Before I put them in, I clean and lubricate uh, each one of the sockets. So I start by trying to fill one card with as many of the original chips as possible. I will put this card on top 
So that's what the user sees it when the computer is open. But I couldn't fill one card completely, so I have to use replacement 4116s, which I test before I, I put them in. Even though they're new old stock, I do test every chip before uh, putting them in. So yeah, two thirds of the chips are replacements, unfortunately. Now, once that is done, I move on to the logic chips, um, which are you know, 74 logic, CD series logic. I take them out one type at a time so I can batch test them uh, with my tester. Um, and I found one defective with my little X-Gecko, which works well enough. It's cheap and works almost just as well as the expensive one I have. And this uh, LS32 uh, just failed. Uh, but it's no problem uh, uh, that I can easily replace an LS32. It's in that position, in the empty socket over there. And uh, here we have uh, the replacement brand new chip. I don't use old date codes. I find that unnecessary. So this is um, one of our um, fully tested and, and restored um, cards with the old uh, regulators nicely connected to the heatsink as you see there with thermal paste in between. Um, and and that's, what you, that's what you see when everything is, is ready to go. Um, but here there is something um, I need to, to discuss with you. Um, there are lots of tantalum capacitors on these cards and I cannot use uh, the Variac. That's why I'm doing this in slow motion so I have time to discuss this with you. I cannot use that technique of using the Variac to slowly increase the AC input voltage uh, to give the tantalum capacitors time to reform because the regulators can be damaged if we put uh, a low input voltage to them lower than the output voltage that they are supposed to regulate. So here I had a choice. I either would risk the tantalum capacitors, they could pop if I don't start this thing slowly, or I would risk the old voltage regulators that I put back in by giving it a too low input voltage. So I decided to risk the tantalum capacitors, not the voltage regulators. And at this point I thought, you know, there is a 50-50% chance that they might pop. But this is something for you to keep in mind. You cannot use that Variac technique of slowly increasing the input voltage in all situations. You have to know when you can and when you can't. And with the linear voltage regulators, you can't. So I risked the capacitors and sure enough, <laughs> fireworks! Um, actually, it, uh, it popped uh, a lot more spectacularly than I expected. Here's a replay. We both know that you want to watch it, so why? <laughs> Look at that. It really goes spectacularly. I think this is the best footage of a popping tantalum capacitor <laughs> on the internet so far. Because I put the card vertically on the top slot of the of the, 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 the backplane, which allowed, it, allowed me to film it very nicely. And that's the result, a very crispy, completely carbonized <laughs> tantalum capacitor. It doesn't damage anything else. It looks worse than it is. Um, when I pulled it out, uh, it just flaked, it just dissolved um, uh, in my tweezers. Um, and it looks like there's carnage there, but you can just clean it up and, and replace it. And it's no problem at all. It, it, it looks a lot worse than it actually is, but I'm happy I captured the footage. <laughs> now, this is the replacement uh, tantalum capacitor. Everything is cleaned. So we can uh, reassemble, uh, put the heatsink back and, uh, and test this again. Hopefully no other tantalum capacitor would blow. So here we go, it goes back to that slot on top of the backplane, so it gives me the opportunity to see everything, to measure everything. It works like a razor card. It's very handy, it's a very nice aspect of the design of the SOL20 that you can use that top slot. So I put uh, the card back with a new tantalum, I turn it on, I make sure that the input voltage is nicely at 110. And then I will start uh, measuring uh, voltages. I start with the voltages on the backplane itself, um, and they were okay. So the input voltages going into the regulators uh, were okay. I check for heat, 5 volt is okay, but the 12 volt was burning. 
So I switched it off at first. I checked the temperature, it was pretty high. Uh, you can't see because of the glare, uh, but it was way too hot. So I turned it on again to measure the voltages going into the memory chips. In other words, the regulated voltages. I check on the backplane first, like before. And on the chips, I find the minus five volt is okay. The plus five is okay, but the plus 12 is not. It was one volt point something. Sorry, with the glare, you can't see it but the 12 volt regulator was busted. The moment current was uh, uh, drawn from it, it was busted. I was surprised because the current draw shouldn't have been that high to really bust a regulator, but I decided to remove uh, all tantalum capacitors anyway. And when I tested that one, the, it was giving me a, a, a short circuit. The tester was telling me that's not a capacitor anymore, it's a resistor. I doubted it, I swapped the leads, tested again, and again, a short. <laughs> so that's why the regulator was busted. Um, there was a short on the 12 volt line, drew a lot of current from the regulator and busted it. Of course, I had tested all uh, uh, power rails that their impedance to ground before I turned it on. And there was no problem there. There was not a short at that point. But when I turned the machine on and put current through this card, um, the oxide layer of that tantalum capacitor just cracked and shattered and turned the capacitor into a resistor. I, I'm still testing it, look, with a multimeter in continuity mode, 0 0.4, 0 0.3 ohm. So that's what you get when you don't reform capacitors, you see? If you think I was exaggerating the previous episodes, this is your answer. Had I not done that and just turned on this machine, it would have been popcorn cooking. <laughs> it would pop all over the place. But anyway, um, it's clear that I shouldn't run this brisk anymore. So I pulled every single tantalum capacitor and replaced it with uh, new ones. Um, there was a pattern uh, to, to the problems. Uh, some colorful tantalum capacitors were, were the problems. The orange, one, orange ones were okay, but I replaced them all. The, these are the culprits. These little guys, colorful like that, uh, these are completely unreliable. Um, so, yeah, just change them all, um, not to worry about um, things anymore. And then I figured, you know what, I'm not go going to run risks anymore. So I decided to swap out all four regulators. There are two per board, five and 12 volts. I swapped them all out for brand new ones, not to run any risk anymore. Um, uh, this is still a minimal intervention restoration, but not a crazy risky restoration. So I swapped them. Okay, um, before we actually put the card in and test it, I want to check the system and the system's behavior without the card. Each card has four memory pages with a starting address. I'm showing you those there. Comes from 8000 to B000 in X for the first card. And if I dump the memory contents in those addresses, I get FFFF everywhere because the card is not installed. Now, if I put the card, uh, first thing I would do is test the voltages that they are being regulated and they are. All three rails are properly regulated. No problem there. And now I will do a um, memory dump on those same addresses again. And now we have content, you see? So uh, the system is seeing uh, the memory, uh, the memories in those cards. Now the next text, test is to actually uh, write something to memory. That's what I'm doing there to, 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 an, an, to addresses that belong in those cards and then dumping the result to see if uh, it memory, if, if it uh, uh, wrote correctly. And um, yes, it, everything tested out. This is an example. I'm dumping address 8000 to Eight, to 800F in X. I already entered those numbers there before, but now I'm going to enter new numbers from 8000X onwards, and I do 00112233444 and so on uh, until FF. Uh, and that's the beginning of uh, the address space of page one. Um, eight, it goes from 8000 to 8FFF. So I wrote everything in and then do a dump of that segment I just wrote into uh, again. And there we go. Those are the values I wrote. So I do this for the beginning of every page and the end of every page for all the four pages 
of each of the two cards and everything worked fine so um, we are good to go uh, um, the next thing is uh, just to test for uh, the temperatures that we get uh, on the card after some use to make sure that nothing's overheating nothing was overheating so this is it folks um, so stay tuned for the next episode which will probably be the last episode uh, of this series in the meantime Take care, I'll see you then.